Before I talk about the plugin principle in full, I want to give you an example. An example of why it's so important. So consider you're a high schooler and you're interested in how much water your classmates drink per day. Um, and maybe this is because you're really into hydration or something like that. So what do you do? Well, in the ideal case, you go ahead and you'd ask every single person. So every single classroom, every single person inside that classroom, you'd ask them how much water they drank. Then you go ahead and you take the average. Pretty simple, right? Well, there's just one problem here. Asking everybody is really, really hard. For high school, it's doable, but for the country, it's incredibly hard, and for the entire world, it would be nearly impossible. So instead, what do we do? So you probably know this intuitively, but I'll just spell it out for you. You go ahead and you ask a random sample. Okay. And then you take the average of that random sample. Now, you're like, Nate, this seems incredibly simple. Why do we need a course on all of this? Well, I really want to stress these two connections right here. Why do we need a random sample? This is something you may not have thought of before, but it's something that's probably pretty intuitive to most people. Yeah, you want to take a random sample. That makes sense. And sampling those people, you know, getting a smaller number of them to go ahead and ask, that seems like a fine operation. But how do we guarantee that this random sample will be representative of everybody? And how do we guarantee that the number we get from the sample will go ahead and extrapolate to everybody? The second question is we take the average of that random sample. Now that makes sense, right? We're interested in knowing the average of everybody. So we should just go ahead and take the average of the small people or the small sample of people that we actually talk to, right? Well, if you know everything about working with big groups and small groups, you know you have to treat big groups and small groups very, very differently. And so in real life, we can see many situations where we need to treat a big group incredibly differently from the way we treat a small group. So why is it that we should actually average here? So these are the two questions that we'll seek to answer. Why is a random sample okay? Why do we need the random sample? And why can we get away with averaging? So stay tuned.